Jennifer Bate is one of the world's most distinguished organists, with a vast repertoire stretching from the 18th century to the most modern of virtuoso scores. Many composers have written for her, inspired by her technique and ability to bring out the colours of the organ. Here she performs Elgar. Jennifer, this Elgar piece is something you'll be playing at a special charity concert at Southwark Cathedral later this month, isn't it? Yes. But I'm intrigued. What does bringing out the colours of the organ mean? Well, each instrument is quite different in its scope. Some are very orchestral, some are very classically built, some are tiny, and small is not always beautiful, but it can be very beautiful. Um, at Southwark, we've got what I would call a Rolls Royce of instruments. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so I'm definitely not in the mini brigade there. <laughs> <laughs> Organ music has a reputation for being a bit stuffy, doesn't it? I mean, but you've designed the concert to appeal to people who may never have been to an organ recital before. How did you do that? Well, this for me is a first format. Um, I was approached by the CEO of Childlink, the Adoption Society. They're approaching their centenary and they wanted some events to raise the profile of their excellent work. So it occurred to me immediately that their trustees, friends, or their adoptees and their families might want to support this. And I was eager to do something which was going to really raise the profile of the organ as well. But they have to understand what they're hearing, well, I suppose. Well, yes, but I thought immediately it was very important to be seen, so we've got CCTV and all my gymnastics will be on view, but m even more important, I needed a star presentation and top of my wish list was Prunella Scales and to my enormous uh, delight she not only accepted but has consistently shown a lot of enthusiasm to do this particular project so then I had to choose a wide variety of readings that from which she could pick her favorites and these cover all sorts of things and some are frankly hilarious but what about the music that you're well, going to be playing how do music, you make that accessible and appealing to people mm, well first of all i have included everybody's two greatest favorites the toccata and fugue in d minor of bach and the vidor toccata but additionally i'm playing music by elgar and mendelssohn and other composers frank french music by langley and um i think the essence is to have a great variety and nothing too long and the wind under the wings are the readings well one of the mendelssohn pieces you'll be playing is this sonata <laughs> Not as something Mendelssohn originally wrote for his sister, Jennifer. Yes, he was in this country on one of his early tours, had an accident where he was in a horse-drawn cab and it fell over and he fell out and injured his leg. 
and during his recuperation period, his sister Fanny was due to get married. So he wrote um, a piece of music as a wedding march for her, but couldn't actually go to the wedding himself. He kept notes about it, and somehow that particular piece must have stuck in his musical mind and memory, because when it came much, much later, um, to writing sonatas, he, he thought of this particular theme first. He wrote the piece in three different versions, in fact, and uh, the completed version is the one that I'm going to be playing at Southwark. What is it about the organ that continues to uh, appeal to you? I was interested when you said a few moments ago that uh, you're having CCTV camera mm. there to show the gymnastics, because it is very physical, and you're a tiny little thing. <laughs> Well, that's all an illusion, you see. Um, you have uh, m multiple keyboards and you have a greater range of stops. Each one has a different voice. And collectively, uh, it's, it's like orchestration, like having an orchestra at your fingertips. So as you blend your different instruments together, or in this case, the different uh, timbre on the organ. Uh, this is how you express the music and make it all come to life, you see. And it keeps you alive. Oh, <laughs> I, love, I have always loved playing to people. And I really feel passionately about the music I play and want to share it with everyone. Well, you've just recently finished recording the complete organ works of Felix Mendelssohn. Mm. Uh, it's a massive 68 pieces on five <laughs> CDs, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> including some only recently discovered and, and never before recorded pieces. It's a huge undertaking. Why did you want to do that? Well, I was fascinated by Mendelssohn's music from the beginning of my career and have always played his well-known pieces. But um, it also interests me to know how composers were work and in fact he loved the organ all his life he didn't actually publish everything he wrote as a young man but I was very interested in his development which is shown through the early pieces and also the fact that he would continuously revisit ideas and um, by taking the latest research and that included some newly discovered things I was able to um, put together the whole of his life's work and then you st when you study somebody's uh, in depth a, a genius in depth it gives you a new uh, vista on how to express his music in many ways you had a long association also with Oliver Messiaen, didn't you who's generally mm -hmm. regarded as the most important composer for the organ in the 20th century yes. and here's a clip of you playing Messiaen's Ascension <laughs> a little edgy, isn't it? It's making me feel quite <laughs> anxious. Uh, what drew you to Messian's work? Well, I loved it from the first, but I had the most extraordinary good fortune that I was preparing a programme for the BBC in 1975, and he was with his wife in London at the time, and he came to St James Muswell Hill, where my father was director of music, and he came to hear this programme in preparation. And because I had his seal of approval and was then constantly in contact with him thereafter, gradually across the years he marked all my scores with his own nuances of interpretation and he eventually took me to his impresario and asked that I should have all his concerts. And he was frequently there, so we had so many opportunities to talk about not only the organ music but all his wonderful music. You were um, his organist of choice, weren't you? Yes, it was a great privilege and it's something that I spend a lot of time passing on now. <laughs> 